What's up everybody, my name is Sawyer Hartman and today we are going to be diving into a full review of the Canon EOS R6. A lot of the opinions that were given about this camera were just that, they were opinions based in opinion, not in fact. None of the basics like image quality and autofocus and the things that we care about were tested at a professional level. I want to thank Canon, one of the sponsors of this channel, as well as sponsor of this video for sending me this camera to test out for the last two months. I know I've kept it entirely too long. I just wanted to make sure that I was giving people an honest review. So topic number one, by far the most important topic in any camera review, what does the image quality look like? What are my recording options and is it going to look good? Well, I can just straight up tell you, yeah, it shoots 4K 60, 4K 30, 4K 24 frames a second, and 1080p 120 frames slow motion, all in 10-bit 422 color. That, if you don't know, is beautiful. Um, the footage looks absolutely incredible. It's razor sharp, it's nice and smooth, I, I there's literally nothing else to say there. I was genuinely very, very impressed. I love slow motion, so the ability to capture 120 frames a second slow motion is absolutely a necessity in whatever camera I'm carrying. It's actually the entire reason I carried around a 1DX Mark II around most of the world. But now that exact same ability has been shrunken down without losing any of the quality and put in a little camera like this with a flip out screen and a bunch of other features that can make daily vlogging and capturing your life infinitely easier. And if you're curious on how the EOS R6's video holds up to the new R5, well, for example, right now we are shooting on the Canon R6 with the same settings, the same lighting, the same backdrop. Can you even tell a difference of what we were shooting on before? Chances are you can't even tell a difference between the two cameras. In fact, I find a lot of perks shooting on the R6 over the R5 for these sit down YouTube videos. Some of the reasons I enjoy shooting on this camera more are smaller file sizes so I can record longer without taking up as much room on my card. Secondly, better codecs for editing when it comes to editing on a laptop. It's a lot smoother and doesn't take as much time to render. And then thirdly, I get almost double the recording time before I get overheating issues. So for me, shooting on the R6, which is what you're seeing right now, is literally best case scenario. Switching back. Now this quality should come at no surprise considering the EOS R6 actually shares the same base image sensor and image processor as the 1DX Mark III. This camera is also giving us a 20 megapixel image sensor, which means we are going to get a very low noise image in low light. Just so you guys know, higher megapixel image sensors are not always better, especially when it comes to video. The second biggest topic for me is autofocus. Without autofocus or with bad autofocus, your video is unusable. Autofocus needs to be flawless. It needs to be quick, responsive, and reliable. There's been a lot of speculation in other YouTube videos and other reviews of this camera of people complaining about the autofocus. Let me just go on record and say I did not experience these issues. In both the 4K shooting modes all the way down to the 1080, 120, I had flawless autofocus on this camera, both when tracking subjects as well as vlogging my own face. I think some of the other reviews might not have dove deep enough into the menu settings because there are a ton of customizable options for autofocus in this camera, very comparable to a 1DX. Meaning in this camera, you can change what it chooses to focus on, how quickly it chooses to focus on it, how responsive it, it chooses to keep it in focus, Focus. The only thing you might experience is since this camera does now have eye tracking autofocus, sometimes you want to turn it off the eye because it'll jump between the eyes and you'll just see a micro adjustment of focus. But I've tested a lot of cameras over a lot of years and Canon's new dual CMOS autofocus 2 system it's just incredible no matter what camera body it's in. Now as a stills camera, this might even be stronger than it is for video. I. I, I find myself having a hard time figuring out if this is a photography camera or a videography camera, which is a very, very good problem to have. In fact, this camera actually performed at the standard of all other Canon cameras when it came to photography. It met the mark and did it incredibly. 
but it really, really stood out when I started shooting in low light. Let's dive into some of the features that actually make this camera stand out, and in my mind, sell it. First feature out there that photographers will think is incredible is it is 12 frames a second mechanical shutter and then 20 frames a second silent electronic shutter. So you can literally take this camera from going and shooting sports photography to turning right around and doing an interview with the team after the game. New to me, this camera also has in-body image stabilization, also known as IBIS. This camera has up to eight stops of shake correction. While I do not use image stabilization as a glide cam or a steady cam or any kind of gimbal, photographers need to understand that having in-body stabilization means you can shoot at at lower shutter speeds, handheld without a tripod, and you'll still get a razor sharp image. This also goes for shooting macro photography. You can now do it handheld because the little shakes that happen from your finger actually pressing the shutter button will be corrected by the eight stop image stabilization. Vloggers, I know you guys are with me. A flip out screen is quite possibly the most important feature in the world. Not so that you can be vain and stare at yourself as you're talking to the camera, but so you can make sure you're in focus. Make sure there's not someone behind you giving you antler ears, and also to make sure you're exposed properly and all of your settings are dialed. Now we covered this briefly before, but the camera actually shoots in 10 bit color. And even better, it shoots Canon log, cinema log, which means a very flat picture profile. This entire video has been shot in Canon log. Once you understand how to use Canon log, you will never go back to standard again. Wedding photographers, I'm talking to you. This camera finally has your dual SD card slots. Having dual SD card slots is a professional tool that might not be required by all shooters, but for the shooters who need it, it is a deal breaker if the camera does not have it. And then the last feature I'll talk about is another feature that was not available in the 1DX Mark II that just makes this camera so special, and that's built-in Wi-Fi. We live in a digital world, and the quicker you can post your photos from the time that they were taken, the more authentic they feel, the more of a story you're actually telling through your photography. Having the ability to transfer these photos directly to your phone or tablet to edit and post is a game changer. If you're a young up and coming content creator who has not gotten their big break yet, let me tell you how it happens. You will most likely in your future find yourself hanging out with someone with a large following, someone that you probably did not expect to be hanging out with. Everyone around you is going to be trying to capture photos of that person so that person might share them on Instagram and help blow up your account. The honest truth is it's never the best photograph that gets posted. It is always the first photograph that creator gets their hands on that usually makes their feed. I know this sounds silly, but I have been on influencer trips where 10 photographers are trying to capture the same creator and they all end up taking the same shot. This is a big feature that I don't think a lot of people understand the value of. And then if all of that wasn't enough, the camera is built like an absolute tank. Just like all my Canon cameras, I'm sure I can put this thing through absolute heck and it will survive and keep shooting just like we all expect them to. But that is it. That is my review of the R6 and that brings us to our final thoughts. In closing, I am so beyond impressed by this camera. It is essentially a 1DX Mark II that has been shrunken down into a little mirrorless body that has features like time-lapse mode, ability to shoot in Canon log, flip out screens, electronic viewfinders, and an RF lens mount. But then the question becomes, why would you buy this camera instead of spending a little more and getting a Canon R5? which is a valid question. If you do not need 8K RAW and you do not need 120 frames in 4K resolution, you want the Canon R6. The reason being, there's a lot of hidden cost shooting on a camera like the EOS R5. You will need a bigger laptop to be able to edit your footage. The memory cards are much more expensive and take up more memory, which you're gonna have to buy hard drives to save and store. And overall, it's going to make your workflow too heavy for what you're trying to accomplish. Firing travel vloggers need versatility, portability, 
dependability, and the ability to use all of these features that can make their vlog stand out. And literally because of those reasons, I believe the Canon EOS R6 is going to be the creator's best friend on YouTube. Just also going on record and saying, I never had the R6 overheat once on me. The entire two months that I used it, I never experienced one overheating issue. Whereas the R5 that is recording this video has overheated twice while filming this sit down segment. So now I'm gonna turn it over to you guys. What do you think about the Canon EOS R6? Are you excited about it? Are you scared? Are you moving up to it? Leave all of your thoughts, questions, concerns, and comments down below in the comments and I will be answering them as much as I can. And I hope that cleared up some of your questions and concerns about the capabilities of this camera. There's so many reviews out there in the world where people just don't know what they're talking about. So if you enjoyed this review, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I make new film and photography related videos every single Sunday and I would love to have you here. And other than that, I wanna remind you to keep your camera with you at all times. Capture everything around you, get better, grow, and just have fun. Photography, videography, and cameras in general are supposed to be fun. But other than that, I hope you guys have an incredible rest of your day. And before you go, remember, stay inspired, stay motivated, and never stop creating. See you guys in the next episode. Peace.